Good day everyone! I'm here to present to you the language policy of the Commission on Higher Education. I'm Mitch Monti Valentin. I will discuss to you the following. First, the background of the language policy or program. Second, history of bilingual education in the Philippines. And lastly, the details about the language policy or program. On May 18, 1994, one of the important commissions in the Philippines was established, the Commission on Higher Education, also known as CHED, through their Public Act No. 7722, otherwise known as the Higher Education Act of 1994, it was signed into law by President Fidel V. Ramos. Pursuant to Republic Act No. 7722, the Commission on Higher Education is mandated to undertake the following tasks. And first, to promote quality education. Second, take appropriate steps to ensure that education shall be accessible to all. And ensure and protect academic freedom for the continuing intellectual growth. The advancement of learning and research the development of responsible and effective leadership, the education of high-level professionals, and the enrichment of historical and cultural heritage. Third, its vision is the Commission on Higher Education or CHED is to be the key leader of the Philippine higher education system. The Commission on Higher Education or CHED was established through Republic Act No. 7722, otherwise known as the Higher Education Act of 1994. It was signed into law by President Fidel V. Ramos on May 18, 1994, which abolished the Bureau of Higher Education and provides that the CHED shall be independent and separate from the DEX and attached to the office of the president for, um, for administrative purposes only. It also confined the jurisdiction of the Department of Education. It means CHED is in charge or responsible on a tertiary level. To elaborate or give more details about Republic Act No. 7722 or the Higher Education Act of 1994, let's give attention to the Section 2 of their said Republic Act, which states that the state shall protect, foster, and promote the right of all citizens to affordable quality education at all levels and shall take appropriate steps to ensure the education shall be accessible to all. The state shall likewise ensure and protect academic freedom and shall promote its exercise and observance for the continuing intellectual growth, the, the advancement of learning and research, the development of responsible and effective leadership, the education of high-level and middle-level professionals, and the enrichment of our historical and cultural heritage. State-supported institutions of higher learning shall gear their programs to national, regional, or local development plans. Finally, all institutions of higher learning shall exemplify through their physical and natural surroundings the dignity and beauty of, as well as their pride in, and the intellectual scholarly life. In the Section 3, Creation of the Commission on Higher Education, in pursuance of the above-mentioned policies, the Commission on Higher Education is hereby created, here and after referred to as the Commission. The Commission shall be independent and separate from the Department of Education, Culture and Sports, or DEX and attached to the office of the president for administrative purposes only. Its coverage shall be both public and private institutions of higher education as well as 
degree granting programs in all post-secondary educational institutions, public and private. The creation of CHED was part of a broad agenda for reforms in the country's education system, outlined by the Congressional Commission on Education or EDCOM in 1992. Part of the reforms is the trifocalization of the education sector. The three governing bodies in the education sector are the Commission on Higher Education or CHED for Tertiary and Graduate Education, the Department of Education or DepEd for Basic Education, and the Technical Educational and Skills Development Authority or TESDA for Technical Vocational and Middle Level Education. Now, let's have a short recap of the history of bilingual education in the Philippines. The language of instruction in the Philippines has been strongly influenced by its colonial past. Some effort was made during the Spanish era to teach in the vernacular, especially in the beginning. But the main language of instruction was Spanish, because education was not universally accessible. However, the Spanish did not spread the general population and remained the language of the educated elite. With the arrival of the Americans, English became the language of instruction. English and Spanish remained the official languages of the Philippines until the 1973 Constitution declared both Filipino, later renamed Filipino, and English the official language languages of the country for communication and instruction. The bilingual education policy, first implemented in 1974 under martial law, made Filipino the medium of instruction for social studies or social sciences, music, arts, physical education, home economics, practical arts, character education, while English became the medium of instruction for science, mathematics, technology subjects. These same language subject divisions were reaffirmed in the 1987 policy on bilingual education. In 1993, however, citing the decline of English literacy and the danger of the Philippines losing its competitive edge in the international labor market, then President Mahapagal Arroyo directed the DepEd to restore English as the primary medium of instruction in schools while still allowing the use of Filipino as a language of instruction for some, lang for some subjects. One of the first steps undertaken by CHED was to update the general education curriculum of tertiary course courses leading to an initial bachelor's degree covering for four curriculum years. This was done to make the curriculum more responsive to the demands of the next millennium. The requirements of the new general education curriculum are embodied in the CHED Memorandum Order No. 59 Series of 1996. Listed under miscellaneous of this CMO is its language policy, which is as follows. In consonance with the bilingual education policy, underlined index Order No. 52 Series of 1987, the following are the guidelines vis-a-vis -vis medium of instruction to it. First, language courses, whether Filipino or English, should be taught in that language. So in here, if a teacher is teaching English subject, the teacher must use an English language. Same with the Filipino, if the teacher is teaching Filipino subject, then the teacher must use a Filipino language. Second, at the discretion of the higher education institutions, literature subjects may be taught in Filipino, English or any other languages as long as there are enough instru instructional materials for the same and both students, instru and instructors or professors are competent in the language. So here, literature subjects can be taught in Filipino, English, or any other languages. So this way, the students will be able to understand more the piece of literature. And lastly, courses in the humanities and social sciences should preferably be taught in Filipino, through the use of Filipino as the preferred medium of instruction in teaching humanities and social sciences will understand more these subjects. For our key takeaways, we should always remember that the goal of the bilingual education policy are enhanced learning through two languages to achieve quality education as called for by the 1987 constitution. So that would be all. I hope you learned a lot from our topic today and stay safe and see you next time.